Hi, I'm Will, and welcome to Trek Tuesday on the Movie Files. Alright, so today I'm going to review the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 4 season premiere, The Way of the Warrior. This was the episode that introduced Worf into the cast of Deep Space Nine. Worf was a member of the Next Generation cast. Uh, he went on to be in the first Next Generation movie, Star Trek Generations. And then after that, he was brought over to Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Now, now the reason why... Uh, Captain Sisko decides to ask Starfleet to send Worf to Deep Space Nine is because there are a bunch of Klingons led by a general named Martok who would become a very prominent member of Star Trek Deep Space Nine uh, mythology uh, later on as the Dominion War progressed and Chancellor Gowron who Worf helped to put into power. These Klingons are starting trouble. The Klingons and the Federation are allies. They've been allies for since Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country. And, uh, and now the Klingons have been at peace for too long. They're looking for somebody to start a war with. They're looking for somebody to scrap with. And the Dominion, tag you're it. Now, the Klingons, the reason why the Klingons and the Federation get into it, as I said, they were allies, the reason why they get into it is because the Klingons are going full force. The Klingons are going in hard. The Klingons are stopping ships randomly, uh, searching without warrants, violating Bajoran law, and the Federation has to do something about it. So Worf, remembering a quote that was said to him by Curzon Dax, uh, the quote being, the only way to deal with Klingons is with Klingons, brings Worf in. Now this is where Star Trek Deep Space Nine really started to pick up. Uh, the first season of Deep Space Nine wasn't good. Uh, the second season was a little better. Uh, the third season was a little better. And the fourth season is really where it started to get good. This is where you really started to get into the meat of the Dominion War. You really started to, you know, get that sense of feeling where I have to be here to watch this next week. And as the show progressed in a lot of ways, it got better even than The Next Generation was. Now this is something that Star Trek is, is really known for, apart from the original series. In the original series, uh, season one was fantastic, season two was even better, and season three was kind of a disappointment, although there are some good episodes in there. Uh, with The Next Generation, season one was good. Season two was okay. Season three was where that show really started to pick steam and became great. As I said, season one was good. It wasn't great. Season one had some good episodes. It was enough to be like, yeah, it's Star Trek. It's okay. Um, but season three was when that show really started to pick up. Season four, season five, it just gets better and better as it goes along. That kind of tends to be a theme in the Star Trek television series. Even Voyager, which is by far the worst of all the Star Trek shows, it even got better as it went on. It just never got great. So the beginning of season four, Worf gets brought in. Uh, he gets brought in to fight the Klingons. And for much of season four, the Federation is at war with both the Dominion and the Klingons. Uh, the Way of the Warrior is a two-hour episode. It is like a little mini Deep Space Nine movie. Uh, it is the second of three uh, double-length Deep Space Nine episodes. Uh, the first being the series premiere Emissary, and the last being the season finale, or the series finale, What You Leave Behind. All right, so now into what is great about this episode. This is one of the best... Deep Space Nine episodes there is. 
First of all, it's great seeing Worf interacting with another crew, a crew that's not the next generation, that's not his normal, regular crew. Uh, and he, in a lot of ways, fits in with the Deep Space Nine cast a lot better than he did with the next generation. It does not take Worf long to become not a next generation character on the Deep Space Nine, but a Deep Space Nine character. This is actually the second character that has been brought over from the, uh, the next generation into Deep Space Nine. The first was Chief O'Brien. Chief O'Brien was a helmsman, or uh, yeah, he was a helmsman, and then he became the transporter operator on the next generation, and was brought over to Deep Space Nine when that show was created, uh, as sort of the chief engineer. He's an enlisted man, he's not an officer, uh, so they don't ever call him chief engineer, he's chief of operations, but he's the only engineer they have. Uh, so Worf fits very well in with the cast of Deep Space Nine. Uh, and I think Worf brings a lot of what helped to make Deep Space Nine a much better show in its fourth season going forward. This is also where we're introduced to a, a possible romance between Worf and Jadzia Dex. They would, of course, go on to be married. Uh, they were the power couple of Deep Space Nine, the same way that Riker and Troy were the power couple on The Next Generation, and Torres and Paris were, would become the power couple on Voyager. And Trip and Paul would be the power couple on Enterprise. So Worf, this is where we first start to see, from the moment Worf and Jadzia meet, Jadzia definitely has the hots for Worf. You definitely see that right away. She says something to him in Klingon, they never say what it is, and uh, it's definitely something very flirty. You can actually see Worf blush. Now seeing Worf against the Klingons is a theme in a lot of Worf-centric episodes. There are a lot of episodes in The Next Generation and in Deep Space Nine they would go on to be even more where the big central uh, conflict at least in Worf-centric episodes is his loyalty to the Federation and to Starfleet and his loyalty to his heritage and to the Klingons. This plays up very well here. And there's not really much conflict. It's always uh, that his loyalty to the Federation is definitely uh, taking a front seat here. But Worf is also uh, contemplating leaving Starfleet, and we see Worf in a very similar place to where we saw Sisko at the beginning of the series. Not sure if he wants to remain in Starfleet. Uh, Worf actually uh, is thinking about joining the Nibirite Alliance, which is a merchant uh, civilian space uh, service and it really is this conflict that allows Worf uh, to want to stay because Worf is is wrestling with where do I belong at this point in the Star Trek timeline the Enterprise was just destroyed by the Duras sisters in Star Trek Generations he's kind of bouncing back and forth from assignment to assignment while they're working on building the Enterprise E and uh, and Worf doesn't have a home he doesn't feel like he belongs anywhere until he gets to Deep Space Nine and then he finds his new home and he uh, he never really looks back. Obviously in the Next Generation movies they bring Worf in because he's you know he's a Next Generation character first and foremost and you can't do Next Generation movies without Worf but he kind of really feels out of place there and a lot of people in the 80s uh, made complaints about you know Captain Kirk who was an admiral uh, Admiral Kirk co going through all these different hoops and jumping through all these different things to convolutedly get him back on the bridge of the Enterprise. Really, that's not true. Really, a lot of what Kirk did was very organic to get him back on the bridge of the Enterprise. Worf, on the other hand, it, the reasons for getting him back on the Enterprise for the Next Generation movies sometimes really was convoluted. Uh, to the point where in Star Trek Insurrection they don't even explain it. They're like, oh, hey, Worf, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I'm here because it's a fucking movie. And uh, and they just go with it. And and in Nemesis, they don't even explain it at all. Uh, and Nemesis, at the end of Deep Space Nine, Worf goes on to be a diplomat. He goes on to work for Chancellor uh, Martok, who is 
now the head of the Klingon Empire, and he goes to be a Klingon bureaucrat. And then in Nemesis, he's just suddenly back on the Enterprise, and nobody even says anything. This was this is a very good episode. This is one of the best uh, full-on Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine episodes. Now there are a lot of really good episodes. There are a lot of episodes better than this one, uh, but they aren't Star Trek episodes. A lot of them, like The Visitor and Far Beyond the Stars, Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite, they aren't Star Trek episodes. They're just very good episodes put into the series. This is one of the best full-on Star Trek episodes of the, the Deep Space Nine run and maybe even of the entire franchise. Uh, the Way of the Warrior is a very good episode. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix along with uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the entire Star Trek television franchise. Um, do yourself a favor, check it out. Even if you just want to watch it, you know, as just a movie. You, I just don't want to watch Deep Space Nine. Just sit down and watch this one. It's a very good episode. And it really makes you want to stand up and cheer in a lot of, in a lot of aspects. Uh, I did want to mention, this has one of the best lines of any Star Trek uh, anything. One of the funniest lines, one of the funniest engagements, and it's between Quark and Odo. Come on, Quark, move it along. You should be in the emergency shelter by now. I'm not going to any emergency shelter. This is my bar, and I'm going to defend it. Really? And how do you plan to do that? With this. You're going to hit them with a box? No, this is my disruptor pistol, the one I used to carry in the old days when I was serving on that Ferengi freighter. I thought you were the ship's cook. That's right. Every member of that crew thought he was a food critic. If the Klingons try to get through these doors, I'll be ready for them. Dear Quark, I used parts of your disruptor to fix the replicators. We'll return them soon, Rom. I will kill him. With what? I love that. I love that line. I love that bit. I just, I love the interaction between Quark and Odo. And, uh, and you don't get a lot of that, you don't get a lot of that in this episode. You get a lot of Quark, you get a lot of Odo, but you don't get a lot of them together. And that episode, that, or that, uh, that little transaction, that scene is just, just phenomenal. So, uh, so thank you for watching. Those are my thoughts on, uh, the Star Trek Deep Space Nine, season four premiere, uh, The Way of the Warrior. I know I've been out for a couple of weeks, haven't had a Trek Tuesday or a Superhero Sunday. Um, I've had a very hectic couple of weeks, but hopefully I'm back. Hopefully we don't have any more, or I don't have any more, uh, anything else that come in between me and, and doing these videos, because I really do enjoy doing them. So yeah, so those are my thoughts. Leave yours in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Hi, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and make sure you head on over to The Blaze and check out my weekly column where I do movie reviews and general Hollywood industry commentary. You can find the links for all those things in the description below. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.